Hi friends, my name is Vanandra Gupta. So in this video, let us discuss about Chargaff's rule. So before entering into the topic of Chargaff's rule, you have to know about the discovery of Chargaff's rule. So he is a scientist who discovered Chargaff's rule and his name is Erwin Chargaff who was born in 1905 and was dead in 2002. And he discovered this Chargaff's rule in 1950 and he was said as Austro-Hungarian biochemist. By this you can understand that he was born in Australia. And he not proposed only one rule, he proposed two rules and the two rules are first parity rule and second parity rule. So before entering into this rule, you people should know about nucleotides which consists of both purines as well as the pyrimidines. Now I will give you the basic topic of this purines and pyrimidines then let us discuss about Chargaff's rule. So coming to the nucleotides, nucleotides are the nitrogenous bases. Uh, which consists of purines and pyrimidines which are classified into purines and pyrimidines and you can find these purines and pyrimidines in the structure of DNA DNA deoxyribose nucleic acid and these purines consists of adenine and guanine these pyrimidines consists of cytosine, thymine and uracil so adenine is denoted with A, guanine is denoted with G cytosine as C, thymine as T, uracil as C, U uracil as U and if you see here all of these nucleotides are present in the double standard DNA. Not only in the double standard DNA, if you take, if you see in the case of single standard DNA, also these nucleotides are present. Okay. So normally this is the structure of DNA, double standard DNA, right? And normally this double standard DNA will be the shape of helix structure. But for understanding purpose, I have drawn it linear. In some cases there will be linear DNA. In some cases also, okay. In some cases there are circular DNA, linear DNA. Okay. And if you see here. Uh, I have drawn it linear, linear for understanding purpose and each of the strand there is nothing but this first strand and second strand right normally I have drawn here double standard DNA so this will be the first strand and this will be the second strand and each of the strand consists of nucleotides of adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine and uracil if you see here the red color one which I, the red color one which I have indicated is adenine the blue color is thymine the green color is guanine and the black color is cytosine that's what I have mentioned here and these are all of these are nucleotides and these are also nucleotides which I have mentioned in first strand as well as in the second strand also and each of the nucleotides will be linked up with hydrogen bonds if you see here the black color one which I have drawn are known as hydrogen bonds each of the nucleotides will be attached with the hydrogen bonds so what is the main function of the hydrogen bonds is nothing but it mainly helps in the maintaining of the structure of the DNA so coming to the you now now let us discuss about the Chargaff's rule so this is a basic thing which you have to know so that's only the reason why I explained this. So coming to the Chargaff's rule, the DNA from any cell will have 1 is to 1 ratio of nucleotide bases. So that's nothing but the DNA from any cell. For example, if you take in the case of human beings or it's in animals or it's in the plants like maize, wheat, example, if you take like this in this case and if you extract DNA from that organisms from any type of cell, then the nucleotide content will be 1 to 1 ratio that is nothing but the percentage of adenine will be equal to the percentage of thymine this, all of these are nucleotide bases I have explained you here right so the percentage of adenine will be equal to the percentage of thymine but the, the percentage of adenine will not be equal to the percentage of cy uh, cytosine right and if you see in this case also the percentage of guanine will be equal to percentage of cytosine but the percentage of guanine will not be equal to the percentage of thymine it doesn't link it doesn't link up with thymine so what is the reason behind that what is the reason behind that so behind knowing behind knowing that reason firstly you have to know that in before I have said you that Chargaff's proposed two types of rules first parity rule and second parity rule right so here in the first parity rule there is nothing but this uh, this case in if you I have said you before the percentage of adenine will be equal to the percentage of thymine and the percentage of guanine will be equal to the percentage of cytosine if you see this case in the double standard DNA then it comes under first parity rule and if you see this in the single standard DNA it comes under second parity rule that is nothing but if you see in the case of double standard DNA this is double standard DNA right so the percentage of adenine will be equal to the percentage of thymine and the linking also takes place only between these both only but the percentage of adenine will not be equal to the percentage of cytosine so the linking will also not take place between these both but the linking takes place only between these both as I have drawn here See if you see here the adenine, thymine, thymine, adenine, guanine, cytosine. Here also guanine, cytosine in this way. If you see in the case of double standard DNA. If you see the single standard DNA also, this rule can be applied. So 
If you take in the case of double standard DNA, it comes under first parity rule. If you see in the case of single standard DNA also, it comes under second parity rule. But both first parity rule and second parity rule was proposed by Chargaff's rule. But proposed by Chargaff's, hence it is considered as Chargaff's rule. So coming to the question, why not base pairing takes place between adenine cytosine or else guanine thymine? That is nothing but why not base pairing takes place between adenine guanine or else guanine thymine? So what is the reason behind that? So the reason behind that is due to the presence of hydrogen bonds. So normally the ability of hydrogen bond takes place only between adenine thymine and guanine cytosine only. But not with guanine and thymine. So due to the presence of hydrogen bonds between these nucleotides only, uh, this base pairing takes place between these both only. Due, due to the, so due to the base pairing of these nucleotides, appropriate nucleotides, charge of rule can be applied. For example, if you see in this case, the adenine and thymine consists of two hydrogen bonds and guanine and cytosine consists of three hydrogen bonds but if you see like this the guanine consists of uh, double bond uh, the, the guanine doesn't make base pairing with thymine as double bond or as triple bond because it doesn't have the ability because the hydrogen bond doesn't have the ability to maintain that type of bonds but the hydrogen bonds has only ability to maintain bonds between adenine and thymine and guanine and cytosine only but not with uh, vice versa okay so now uh, if you see here this uh, the base pairing of this hyd with hydrogen bonds is known as Charkov's rule of DNA base pairing now I'll explain you with this structure with the help of the structure you can get easily understand that why the why there is a presence of double bond between adenine and thymine and why there is a presence of triple bond between guanine and cytosine now I'll explain you within the case of structure so if you see here this is the structure of thymine, this is the structure of adenine, this is the structure of cytosine and this is the structure of guanine and I have said to you that the thymine, the bonds which are mainly present between thymine and adenine are only two so it is double bond if you see here this is one of the bond and this is another bond so this both of the bonds will be linked up between thymine and adenine or else adenine and thymine I have written here adenine and thymine or else thymine and adenine but only two bonds are present so it is double bond so the bond, how many bonds are present between adenine and thymine they will ask you like this in the entrance examinations so you have to answer that there are only two hydrogen bonds so it is double bonded coming to here in the cytosine and guanine three hydrogen bonds are present this is one second and third or as first second and third totally three hydrogen bonds are present between cytosine and guanine so i have written c triple bond g or as g triple bond c either like this or here like this so this is about the hydrogen bonding between uh, adenine and thymine and guanine and cytosine so by this you can understand that uh, the bonding doesn't take place between adenine and cytosine or else thymine and guanine or else cytosine and thymine or else adenine and guanine okay because of this hydrogen bonding only so due to this hydrogen bonding the DNA structure can be stable or else uh, the, it, it may it's to maintain the structure of the DNA like helix the normal the structure of the DNA is helix because due to the presence of hydrogen bonds okay so this is about the charge of rule. So thank you for watching this video guys. And for proper explanation on this, uh, you know, of this, all of these nucleotides like adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine, there is much deep explanation. I already explained this in my previous video. So if you are interested, you can watch that. Then the link will be given in the description box. So thank you for watching this video guys. If you like this video, please do like and subscribe. And if you have any doubts regarding this video, please comment in the comment box. I will clarify your doubts immediately. Thank you.